Hey, it's Brett, Useful Aircraft. Listen, um, I showed you that video about how the plane flies and everything about it, but I never really showed you the airplane. So um, it's a slow morning on my OnlyFans, so let's go ahead and do a mod to it and show you how it's built. I'm able to put my Nerf dart drops on uh, on this airplane. Oh yeah, that's Newt. Everybody say, hey Newt, hi Newton. Newt's a good boy. But if you notice, with the sweep of the leading edge, the uh, outboard, notice with the uh, sweep of the leading edge, the outboard attach point for the uh, Nerf dart drop mechanism is offset by what appears to be about three and a half millimeters. What I need to do is make a cutout on the inboard Nerf attach point, I guess hard point you could almost call it. Um, I need to make a cutout so that can fall back about another three and a half millimeters. Let's hop into Corel. Okay, here we are in Corel. Let's jump in, take a look at uh, what we've got. These are the attach point cutouts. Those are the alignment markings. It's going to be the interior of these two that we're going to want to work with. So what I'm going to do, grab an alignment rail. I'll put it down on the bottom. I'll zoom all the way in. Now let's move my rotation point on my alignment guide to there and bring it in just like that. This way my alignment guide has the same angle as the hard point attach fitting. What I want to do is I want to take this and now I want to bring it into the center. So I'm going to grab my alignment guide and drop it into the center. And this will carry forward and show me a point on the leading edge that we now need to make a three and a half millimeter cut. That cut is actually going to be a box. It is going to be symmetrical um, and it's going to be seven millimeters. The reason being is that it's got to cut three and a half millimeters either side. So the width of my hard point attack, or yeah, the hard points, five millimeters, not that I just didn't measure that. So we'll set this to uh, five millimeters and I'm gonna go for eight millimeters to accommodate for some shrinkage. Let's see, we'll place this guy, take a corner of it, Put it there, zoom in, again put it into rotation, set my axis of rotation, rotate this so it meets the same criteria. I am going to round the corners on this, let's see, does one millimeter look about right? No, let's go a little bit more, let's go two millimeters. That looks better. Again, this is all TLR shit. I'm going to grab this guy. And we want to find approximately the midpoint there. We'll do that. Um, that is rotated by 9.405. I will copy that, paste it, so we get an extra one. I will then paste it yet again. And let's mirror that on a vertical axis, just like this. And can we move it over. And put it That's approximately where I want it, but let's do this the right way. Same thing. Zoom in here. Select the line so we get the axis of rotation. Where did that go? There we are. Drop this to the intersection. Rotate this. Should be about there we are. Up. Oh. Grab my alignment line, put it to the center. There we go. And then same thing, we'll take this guy and we'll drop him in the center. Does that look right? There's one, two, three, four. There's one, two, three. Let's drop him a line. There we go. That looks about right. And just for fun, we can check to see if that's aligned on the other side with a rail that'll pass all the way through. Like this. Oh, lo and behold, we got lucky. Amazing. So there we go. Now we have what should offset that hard point by about uh, three and a half millimeters inboard to allow the nerf darts to be aligned with the free stream of the aircraft in forward flight. We also have center of gravity markings here and here. Just seeing if there's anything else we need to do. Looks like we got something good to cut. Let's go ahead and do that.
the laser. First, move the laser head out of the way. Second, turn the laser off. That's it. It's a completely artificial construct, but I try and make my designs a single sheet. Um, you know, it's... Uh, I crashed a lot of airplanes. I wasn't very good for a long time, and I don't know. I found that I like the way that the airplanes fly. Sure, it's a little higher wing loading, um, but it's a challenge to see how many different designs you can pull out of a uh, a single sheet of paper. As you can see, there's more than one or two. Cowl cap forward. This is for the pan and tilt system if you want it. That's the uh, nose, tail obviously. Aft avionics rack, mainly for the ESC. Holds the uh, vertical stab. Barrier horizontal stabilizers. That's it. You will notice in the wing, there's a fold line here that can be folded in half uh, and broken down for shipping. All of these airplanes, just to show you, ship in something looking just like this. Um, so whenever I'm bringing them on the road uh, or whatever I'm doing with them, this is how tight and how tiny they can be. Fits into a backpack, fits into a carry-on, including with FPV gear and uh, radio and whatnot, and away you go. Anyway, let's go build something. All right, this should give you a uh, fairly decent view, I hope. We're going to take off the things we don't need right now. We don't need the uh, horizontals. We are not putting the uh, rudder on yet. Uh, we'll work on building the nose here. We're going to use the avionics rack in a bit. I'm not building this airframe up as pan and tilt, so this piece, not really too worried about it. I'll get rid of that. And um, that's going to be the, uh, the cowl cap that we're going to use, so we'll save that. Fuselage, but why don't we get started with the wing? So. With the wing, make sure there's nothing underneath. Pull out all the little pieces that are keeping it off. It's on the work surface, that's good. These are uh, index marks for popsicle sticks. Um, let's grab some, I don't know, I think you can see the index marks I'm talking about there and down there. So it just shows you exactly where, for example, a popsicle stick will fit, you know, just right in there, just right there. Um, so, I'll take my glue gun, which is not warm, and we'll take 10 minutes to warm up. See you in a minute. And we're back. It looks like the uh, glue stick is uh, ready to go. So, let's go ahead and put some glue and get some parts on. Again, this is the uh, aft spar. And we'll go ahead and run the uh, lines. I'll make it continuous for the forward spars. Pop these in place. I'm a lazy man, let's throw a weight on it. Same thing for that one. It's nice, those alignment guides give you an idea where things are gonna work. Um, where they also help out, and I'll show you this as we build, here on the tail. If you notice that alignment mark there, which I'll go ahead and put hot glue, will, um, if you're using the same size popsicle sticks that we're using, or that I use, um, when this sticks out the bottom of the fuselage, it'll give the airplane more or less a level attitude. It's trimmed to that distance. So let's go ahead and take care of some other parts we can do right now. I'll use that for a little bit of compression. I use the living daylights out of these one, two, three blocks. They're really handy. You can buy them on Amazon. This is the... Uh, leading edge of the nose. Um, originally, I just had a flat piece for it. Uh, it actually just looked like the top half there. Uh, then I decided if I use the corrugation the same way I do on the leading edge of the wing, it gives it more strength. So let's go ahead and put a little bit of hot glue. Just like that, and I'll fold it over. Just like that. Same thing, put a weight, let it hold. 
The other thing that I use that's pretty handy, and I made this one day, old computer case fan, couple of popsicle sticks, a pair of old 18650s, and a uh, switch. What it basically is, you hit the button, and you got a fan blowing on whatever you want. You can position that uh, however you need it. When you're working with hot glue, it's kind of a godsend, especially when you're working in a garage that's currently 90 degrees. Okay, we're gonna keep rolling. Um, these guys, yeah, those are good. I'll pull these off. There we go. We're gonna need to get some hop, uh, popsicle sticks in these slots here, but what we're gonna need to do in order to do that is uh, do the fold. So I'm making sure there's no uh, foam board left in there. We'll flip this over. Nothing underneath. I use a metal ruler, helps keep my bend line straight. So that's gonna end up under there. It's gonna fold along this edge. Hot glue. How much do you need? Enough. I don't know. No firm answer on that. Bring some one, two, three blocks over. Now again, I'm gonna grab from the back side of this using this ruler. It keeps everything in line and bend it. Oh. You'll learn, hey, this is, um, foam board has different densities, I find. Um, I'd love to say it's the most consistent build material in the world. It really isn't. Sometimes you get a batch that'll be a little bit, uh, a little bit stiffer than others. Um, I think they do a fairly good job. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not in the foam board business. I can't speak to uh, what works and what doesn't. But uh, anyway, as you can see, a bunch of one, two, three blocks down there. And that'll give us the, uh, bleeding edge that we want. Give this a little bit. Get glue ready on the other side. Pull my ruler. Use that. When I'm sitting in a hotel room, I do not bring the one, two, three blocks. Um, I just build these things freehand. And you know, it's interesting. I find myself actually being a lot more precise because I'm taking my time. When I do them here in the garage, um, I am well aware of the fact that I've got multiple spares of whatever parts that I want. Um, so I tend to work quicker than I do when I'm on the road. All right, so that's ready for a fold. Bring this into position. Hands under it, thumbs basically on where you're folding and start bringing it over. Same thing. Put some of these down. Just gotta hold it for a little bit. I'll start robbing Peter to pay Paul. Yeah, we'll let that uh Go ahead and cool down. Control horns. Um, let me grab a pair of these. Well, let me say a pair. There's one. There they are. There's a pair. You like how I put little injection molding marks to keep them together as if they were uh, cast together? No, they're not. They're 3D printed. Um, this tab goes to this side. This tab goes to that side. Basically, pop them up just like that. Pop it up just like that. Push this forward so they're over the table's edge. And then a uh, little hot glue on the top. I'll show you, there's a hole right in the center, all my control horns. And the point of that, it acts like a rivet. So, I'm laying a little glue across the leading edge. Punch a little glue through that center hole and a little on the trailing edge. The uh, hole that I'm talking about, let me push this forward just so I can be lazy. Um, is here, it's the big hole. You see that? There you are. So 
basically, these will catch hot glue and be embedded in the foam board. The foam board is five millimeters thick. That's five millimeters there. This hot glue will go through and basically provide almost like a cotter pin, like a pin holding this in place. So again, that's the, uh, those are the control horns, 3D printed. I just made those cheap and cheerful as they say. Um, okay, I think this should be more or less ready to go. The uh, maker's blocks are like rabbits. You'll buy them and all of a sudden you'll discover you have 50 of them. They're just too handy. So check the alignment. Pop these uh, in. Now oh, I got something blocking that one. May want to go through better from the other side. And sometimes that's the case. Sometimes they prefer to come in through the top or the bottom. Either way, they'll look fine. The underside, if you got little creases, hey, hey, don't worry about it. It's a foam board airplane. B, um, nobody's going to see the underside of this airplane. I am not in love with the output of this hot glue gun right now. There's a lot of squeeze for not a lot of juice. I might actually swap to my backup. There we go. This glue gun is very old. Just like me. So, a bunch of glue. And then use uh, whatever you have on hand. Here's a popsicle stick. I'll knock that glue down. Force it into that hole where the spars go. I'm gonna put a weight on that nose piece, get that to uh, sit flat. Let's see how we can do this. That'll do her. We'll give that a, uh, a minute. Not the cleanest, most elegant. Foam board decided to... Sometimes you gotta do a little English with it. If everything was simple, and everything was precise. It wouldn't be a dollar, my friends. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. We're going to um, put a little bit of uh, hot glue in order to um, really make sure that those popsicle sticks are embedded in that uh, in that wing. They do a surprisingly good job of absorbing the load. So we'll give it a minute here. Maybe the magical of editing, which I'm trying to learn, video editing. Um, Maybe we can speed this up. Since we're going to flip it, we want to make sure this stuff is indeed not tacky. Which it is. Little air compressor. Mm-hmm. 
That'll work. Stick a little glue between the wing halves. Just, again, anything to absorb that load. This airplane actually, it's pretty good. It, um, it has a higher wing G loading. It's a fast airplane. Um, and that load has got to go somewhere. So, you know, sometimes actually, if you want to do a reinforcement, this is kind of a clever thing. You can do this on the, uh, on any of these airplanes, but you know, you're going to have a bending moment that's going to execute right through this uh, center line here. Um, so sometimes I will put lines of hot glue. Why? When you think about it, this is going to be bending in such a way that these, uh, these lines will either have to be compressed or uh, put under tension. So um, this sometimes helps. Now again, if you're super weight critical on a particular build, maybe that's not one done to do it. But as you can see, those little striations, um, that's like a little bit of extra structure just for free. So, uh, same thing, I'll put my super cooler on it. Let's get that thing pointing down. Mm. Yeah, there's arrows on it. I'm that smart. I put it the wrong way. Okay, that's got some basic tack to it. Let's do some work on the underside. I'll flip this. That's the side people are gonna see. And if you look, it looks pretty clean. Even though we just got a, uh, not the most elegant of folds. So we're gonna encase these uh, popsicle sticks in that spar. So again, just touching, um, the top of that uh, hole, because when I run it over with a either, you know, like popsicle stick or key card or piece of foam board, I really want to make sure I have foam board, um, foam board glue and popsicle stick all kind of making one big solid unifying spar. So there we go, a bead on the top of every one of those. Wipe that down. Wipe that down. And I'm forcing that in there. And when you do it, after you crash one of these airplanes or you, you bang it up and you break it, feel it. It actually gets uh, some remarkable rigidity. So that's it. That's the wing. Um, we pretty much built it. The only other thing you can do if you want to is exercise these uh, hinges. But right now I'm going to put it aside and we'll do that later on in the build. Let's uh, get onto the fuselage. So the fuselage is simple. This is it. The, um, basically, these are the three uh, parts to it. Um, these are fold lines here. And as you can imagine, take it to the edge of the table, just like this. I hope you can see it. Push down here. Push down there. You, you know, if you want to be more precise about it, put a ruler up there. It's going to work out pretty much either way. Um, there we are. And in doing so, we're about 75% of the way to a fuselage. In the back of the fuselage, avionics rack. Um, you can install it either way. You can see it got two holes. Why? Because I kept putting these things in upside down when I would stab the, uh, the rudder in there. Uh, the popsicle stick would be on the wrong side. So. Here we go. Hot glue. You can imagine I am going to use um, my one, two, three blocks on this and jig it into position. The other thing I like about the one, two, three blocks is they do tend to keep things square. So a little bit of hot glue on the edges. Take this, pop it in there. I put my thumb in this middle hole, line it up. Grab a couple blocks, just like that. You'll notice it tapers at the back, so same thing, use a couple blocks back here, 
We'll pinch this in. There we are. A couple blocks to hold that in place. Make sure it is centered at the back. When you're looking straight down back here, make sure the two tabs here, I'll drag you around. Let's go for a car ride. No. Yeah, just like that. No, here, watch. Look down, out of the coffee cup. Hell, Satan, I see it. See that? Line those up. There you go. All right, let's go back. No, over here. There we are. Hi. Okay, so these are in. Those are in. For no particular reason, I'm going to run a bead of hot glue down the uh, avionics rack outside. It's honestly not a high stress area. Those are in, that's centered, all that's good. These are fine. Do not glue this on yet. This will be one of the last things you put on. Yes, that's where it's gonna live. But the question is, you're gonna mount the wing here and the wing might have a little bit of slop. And when you do that, this fit is precise. The way you make that fit even more precise, unlike on the way that I built the last one, is you can move this. And there we go, and then you get a nice clean cut. Speaking of which, let's put the camera mount on there. The camera mount literally looks like this has the, uh, the rails in there that uh, my, let's see. Like, here's DJI camera. You can take this, I pull the pin out, and this will slide in and out. More importantly, see that? There we go. Um, more importantly, you can use a fake camera. Why? Because I'm really good at crashing these things when I first start off. That's a fake camera, it weighs the same thing as the real camera. And then once it's in, see this pin? It just slides like that. And then this isn't going anywhere. So pull that out, slide that out. Hot glue. Smack this little bastard down. There we go. I'll just lay that down and put the weight of the world on them. There we go. You sit and be a good boy. Okay. Don't need these right now. Uh, let's continue with the fuselage. That's tacked up. That's fine. Um, at this point, we can pull these off. Leave them there for now. The tail, this piece is sticking up. Well, we're just going to bend that in, but when we do, it's gonna fit into those little slots like that, but we want some glue in there. So let's put some glue. Hot glue just like that. Hot glue just like that, there we are. Same thing, put these in, squeeze them, make sure they're right where you want them. I'm gonna put one of you there, I'm gonna put one of you there. Actually, I'm going to double you up. And then just to make sure we're holding that full nose down, I'm going to put that there to move the CG aft so everybody's sitting in compression. Um, looks like we're in good shape. The uh, motor mount, that's going to just slide in just like that. Um, as soon as we have access, we can start putting that in. For the sake of brevity, boom. Remember what I said? I like to use that thing. Servos. Um, I'm going to use these same servos from the last build. Drop isopropyl, had a little bit of hot glue res residue there. Oh, got to cover my hole. Try not to get the uh, hot glue on the work surface. I'm going to let this guy dry for a minute. Check my other servo. Yeah, he's clean. Okay, another servo. There we are. Uh, while this hangs out on the fan, uh, hangs out on the fan, I'm going to show you this. There we are, there's the servo mount. There we are. See that cutout? Yeah, you do. Just at the front. That's where the wires go. And I'll show you. Servo will go in like that. Um, it's designed, focus you, there we are. See, servo just goes in like that. 
Um, that cutout was there originally. Uh, it's kind of a generic template that I use, so you install the servo after you put the wings on. But I don't like doing that, because I'm going to put glue on the top and bottom surface of the servo, and the servo is going to be part of the wing attach point. This is a wiring pass-through for uh, the Nerf dart drop mechanism. That's a pass-through for the uh, aftmost popsicle stick spar. That's the forwardmost popsicle stick spar, and that's for the wing fold over. So now you understand everything that's in there. Let's put you back. Yeah, just like that. There we are. Okay, here we go. Pull these off. Guess what glued? Okay, kosher. Um, put in some servos. So I'm just going to put some hot glue on the underside in there where the servo is going to go. The servo is actually very well attached on both of these because remember, it's going to have glue on the, on the top and the bottom. So the wiring is going to go forwards and that just snugs in like that. And the other servo, which I put here, the wiring goes forward. Hi. Control horns on the outside. There we go. That's just like that. Um, remember, I'm reusing these things, um, so we're going to figure that they work and that they're centered and all that stuff. For God's sakes, I'm not a good model builder. Um, these are not good practices. Fat dude in the garage building paper airplanes. All right, that's in. Um, what do we got to do next? Let's put a motor on. Um, so, got our motor and our mount. The wiring on mine goes up. I have it on the upper surface. Why? Well, if it's on the bottom, uh, it catches when you do a shitty landing, and I do a lot of shitty landings. That's the wiring pass through just behind the. Uh, the rudder. So this guy is just going to press in just for a dry fit test. Those will lay like that. And it just presses in like that. Okay, just to show you, that's how it presses in. Now, I want the ESC underneath. I have not glued it yet, so we can do this. Um, why do I want the ESC underneath? I don't know. Fuck. Is the uh, antenna going to go up top? You know, we could uh, relate this to full-scale aviation, where if you're talking to a ground station, use a bottom-based antenna, and if you're talking to uh, another aircraft, use a top antenna, but um, I don't think we're too worried about that. Okay, so I got this pushed in, fed all the way through. I'm going to put a little glue there on all the low spots. Um, this is going to be tough to do so you can see it. Let's try it. Hardest part about this isn't building the airplane. It's figuring out where the camera goes. All right, there you go. A little bit of glue in there. I'm also going to put a little glue on the insides. Why? Because that's where those mounts are going to smear. So wiring goes up as we discussed and press my PLA motor mount in there. And everybody says, PLA, what the hell? That's not gonna work. It's gonna get too hot and it's gonna melt. I'm gonna tell you bullshit. I've been flying these things, um, and when I say these things, I mean a zillion different builds of these different style airplanes, quad motors, bigger motors, up to 60 amp ESCs. Um, I use PLA motor mounts. Um, it works just fine. Now, don't print them in black, especially if you live in Arizona. I tell you, they get hotter than hell out here, uh, and black will just warp just sitting there. I print everything in white. A, it matches the foam board, kind of looks clean, but most importantly, it's uh, it doesn't get that hot. So, all right, we got our power cable here. We've got our, um, yeah, we got the DC power and we got the signal cable. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in some servos. The logic I use is just the way we number uh, there, I'll bring you in. We can see this a little bit better. Um, sort of how we do it on airplanes. Um, the left side will be number one, right side will be number two. That's the way motors are, uh, are numbered. So for example, when we say we're turning one or turning two. Um, so here we go, take that and uh, get my wires straight, more or less. Let's see, this is gonna be for channel one. I go, T-A-E-R, but remember this is a, um, this is 
Elevon. So anyway, it's, it's not T-A-E-R. It's T-E-E, -E, and there's no R. So it's just T. All right, there's servo cable for the left, the servo on the left wing, servo number one. Servo cable for the servo on the right wing. That'll be uh, the ground at the aft, signal at the front. Boy, I'll probably watch this video later and say, no, don't plug it in, that's the wrong way. I don't know, I wouldn't be surprised. I've done worse. Um, let's take these back here. Put a little hot glue on the underside. Well, remember, isopropyl, it's your friend. That'll come off. And I'm just gonna touch this to the ground here. Let her sit. The antenna, um, I'm just gonna have it basically back here underneath. On some of my builds, on some of the airplanes that I make, I have the antenna coming through this little hole here. See that? Um, I'm not worried about it. Um, seems to work just fine, so he's gonna lay just like that. All right, um, so we, got, uh, we can basically mount the wings at this point. So let's get all that wiring down and out of the way. Just like that. I'll put for CG purposes, I'll put that guy up forward. That is well forward, that keeps this surface flat. And now, just for a test fitting and a look-see, I'll give you some perspective on this. The wing is gonna go like that. So there's this fold line back here, about three millimeters in front of that is where I want the glue to end. So that's just what I wanted to see. It's gonna go all the way through this KFM slot. It's gonna cover the forward uh, popsicle stick mount, top side of the servo, half popsicle stick mount to about, like I said, about three millimeters in front of that. So we'll start here, we'll do the reverse. Half popsicle stick mount. We'll skip the through wing. Servo. Skip the alignment tab. Forward popsicle stick mount. KFM cut. Take the wing. You lay down on sail. Move coffee. And line everything up. And then let's make sure that we're pressed all the way down and there's no wires sticking through. Ask me why I check. Okay, that side's good, that side's good. Same thing, we'll hold you down there. One more weight up front. Man, yeah, why not, one in the back, it's Christmas. And I'll let that uh, here. One of the things I'm gonna do is on the top here, Upper surface. Oh, I see what you're doing. Naughty. Upper surface of the wing. Let's see how we do this. There we are. See these little alignment, the forward alignment tabs? I'm going to go ahead and put some hot glue in there. Let's see if I can do this. I don't know if it's really gonna help, but you know, wings stay on, mas mas plus good. Okay, here we go. For the most part, that should be good on the underside. Now, let's play some games. We're not gonna worry about center of gravity just yet. Oh, you know what we could check for fun? This will be the inboard alignment mark. Oh yeah. One wing, look at that, no more gap. That's gonna line up nicely. Spoiler alert, shouldn't have done that just yet. 
Anyway, um, the mounting of the battery in the CG tray, we're gonna, look at my belly, nobody wants to see that shit. Okay, the mounting of the battery in the CG tray, we're not gonna do that till the very end. Um, the reason being is that is somewhat critical in terms of its placement. We wanna make sure we have that down to the Nats ass. Let's mount our FPV camera system. There's a cut here. The um, vent, you know, I figure if you gotta have something to attach something, give it a function for God's sake. Give it a purpose in life, life you know? What's my purpose? You pass butter. So, see how that works? That works just like that. Now, what does that allow you to do? You know, I mean, from the front, when you're zipping right along, if you have nothing else to do, you may as well pump some air into there. Um, so, we will take this, we'll put it in an aft position, so it snugs up nice on the wing. Get that all secure. Now, remember I said you put this on last? We'll spin this around, give you a better chance to look. There we go. You put that on last. Same thing, we're gonna pinch it from the sides. Oh, that's gonna be beautiful. Here we go, we'll pinch it from the sides. We'll do that. Um, and that will be so much more centered. Why don't I do that on all of my planes? And actually, that's uh, something I've decided that I have been doing on all my planes. So that's why I'm rebuilding a lot of my past designs, including ones that I don't even have on the wall. Um, so, a little hot glue, wipe it like a hot booger. A little hot glue, there we go. If you do this right, and why wouldn't you? One of these back here for FCG. There we go. That nose mount should be as snug as a bug in a rug. Um, I used to do a 3D printed reinforcement. And do I have them here? Here's one of them. For that nose bridge, this used to live right at the very front. Picture the very tip. Then I started doing this bend thing. That bend thing works a thousand times better. What I probably will do, and this will be hard to get on camera, is I'll flip it over afterwards and fill it that edge with a little bit of hot glue in there. The reason being is that really works to uh, kind of build a little strength. So here, pull that off, pull that off. That's probably more or less, yeah, that's kind of straight. Okay, here, I don't know if you can see. You know what you shouldn't do with a shoulder injury? Especially with a rotator cuff one, this. Need one of those five axis arms. Okay, that's gonna help a little bit. Um, for the sake of getting it out of our hair. Oh, and folks say, well, why is it not gonna pop up? Um, here, remember this part? Yeah, it's hot, I'm sweating. We're gonna slide this in. See that there? Alignment holes, talk to you about that. Squeeze the pin in, there you go. Now watch, camera goes fore and aft. You see how it's a split tail over that where the uh, antenna passes through? Yeah, not my first rodeo. So pull it out, just like that. Slide your nose in. Line up and latch the back with a vent and secure it in place at the front. Done right, that top hatch is not moving anywhere. It gives you a really nice, neat and clean build on that. Okay. Um, Let's close out the back end. Motor's in. We're gonna figure the wires are good. This is going to be elevator, uh, is it an elevator top cap? It's sort of the aft fuselage top cap. That's what we'll consider it. That's gonna go in, and then we're gonna need to uh, put these guys on. Um, what do I want to do first? Doesn't really matter. It gets unwieldy when you put the elevator on. Let's put these little bastards in. Little glue. Do the same on this one. There you go. 
put them in just like that, and we'll hold. Do you like that hairy arm? Yeah. Okay. Um, that wiring is going to be okay. I want it biased to the left because if you look at how the rudder is going to go through, that's going to be on the right side. Um, let's put the half fuselage close out in place. See, now the glue is really flowing. I mean, this is just it. You got to start your glue gun like, like 30 minutes before you start building is kind of my thing. So anyway, uh, I'm not putting any directly on top of the uh, motor mount. I don't know why. Don't ask me. Put that on there. Seriously, just like a good booger, you, you wipe it up and you swirl it and it immediately goes away. Um, all right, that's centered at the front, centered at the back. We'll call that good. Give that a minute or so. Then we're going to break the elevons free and uh, let's take this. Um, there is no contact. There's basically contact here. And you can put a little on the sides. Slide that little bastard in. Um, hold your tail up because remember I said it pokes through and it pokes through a fixed distance. Yeah. If you let it touch the tail right now, the elevator won't, or the uh, rudder won't seat correctly. So we're going to hold that up. Now let's uh, take a look at it and see what we think. Here we go. I'll spin this around. Spin you around. God, there's so many things. No, not that way. Jesus. All right, here we are. So camera's in. Nose is aligned. Nose alignment of the camera, or I'm sorry, the top hatch is held by the camera cutout. The nose is strengthened by the fold. The fold gives better adhesion to the sides of the nose, really makes it stronger there. Um, we have the swappable camera module. As opposed to just having a latch, we have a latch with a vent, kicking some extra airflow down there. Um, you know, this is just a line of sight build, so we're not too particularly worried about that. Uh, USB access, but that's where the USB access to a flight controller would be. We've got our cutouts for our, um, if we want to mount the Nerf darts on it. The tail surfaces, we're looking way back in the back, back, back. I don't know. Maybe if I get the prop out of the way, there we go. They're more or less straight. No, well, they're about as straight as anybody is these days. Um, okay, I think we're... Uh, I think we're in pretty good. We're about 90% of the way there. Let's throw some flight control in there. Where's my, there we go. Fold line is gonna be along this. If you use a ruler on this, um, it'll make this, no, come on. Now look, you go down there. See, all right. So if you, it's gonna go basically from there to, I can just see a cut mark there. Um, you can look at the underside, you'd see the same cut mark. Grab the whole thing. Push down. See? Now I'm going to put it underneath, and we're going to push up. You hear that brake sound. There we go. Down one more time. There we go. We got a floppy elevon. Let's do the other side. See that? Push down. Same thing. It's like the gym. Went to the gym today, did not particularly enjoy that. Thank you very much, Brandon. Go ahead and push down. All right. Floppy, loose, broken elevons. Tail's in the way. I should have done this before. I'm an idiot. It's my first time building an airplane. Let's pull this guy off. There we are. Now it can sit on its back. Um, because we're just putting this in right now, let's see. 
I'm not going to, uh, you know, I'll check the exact rigging on this, set sub trims and the like. How the hell did I get that in like that? Well, I'm going to have to go back to the video and see how I did that. I normally run them the other way. Well, that's right, okay. You want to screw something up? Just record it. Okay. Same thing on the other, other side for an idea of the rigging. You want it sitting about five millimeters nose up and this is gonna be a sub trim issue. That is probably 10 millimeters nose up. You want the bottom line at the top line there. Um, that is probably double what I have. I'll set it with sub trim um, and we'll get it all square that way. Let's take a battery. I'm not hooking up power, but actually I will grab, grab my remote. All right, there we go. I think that's ready. It's set for my FPV pusher. Um, battery in the tray, battery in the tray. Oh, let's get you set in a better place. There we go. You're like a child. You just sit in the last place I put you. It's ridiculous. You know, it wasn't a hot car at Hooters, but anyway. All right, so. I'm going to put this on. And yeah, this is a FPV build. I'm using the analog. I'm not putting a flight controller in this one. Um, this is just a fast, quick build. Check my center of gravity. And actually I wanted to touch forward. So easiest way to do that, move this forward a touch. That is perfect. Okay, we're gonna secure the battery in that location. So what I'll do, made a mark. And I'll put my battery tray in. And trust but verify. Not plugging that in yet. Perfect. It's right where I want it. Okay. All right, um, that looks good. Why don't we plug the battery in and see if anything works. Throttle's idle, let's see. That says disarmed. All right, those servos are way off, but uh, I'll give it a test. That's pushing in the right direction. I'll disarm it. Um, reset my control horns to a relatively neutral position. And uh, actually, I love you. I'm not leaving the battery plugged in. But I'll show you flight controls. work. I just have to adjust the sub trim on those before we go flying, but we'll do that. Anyway, that's it. We built an airplane. I think that's a pretty cool and easy build. 
Uh, finishing tips, what I might do, actually to hell with it, I'll do it here, I'll show you. See these uh, interior rails, a little hot glue. We will throw packing tape over that. Right now I'll put these screws in. Really? This is called man fights with screw, screw wins. Okay. I'd edit this out, but I'd need the view time. That goes in like that. I'm teaching you how to put in a screw. Jeez, old Pete. Yes, it's magnetized. I am that lazy. Hi, Namas. I never thought I'd be making a video where I'm screwing. Okay. Well, I won't say never. Alrighty. Um, oh, yeah, shit. I'll take the top plate off for a second. Packing tape. Let me get that. There we go. I go a little over halfway, so there's gonna be a good amount of overlap. Flop it down. There you are. When I say a little over halfway, I mean center of uh, center of the fuselage. So there's a little bit of overlap right in the middle. How do you get it so it lines up at the back? I don't. I also don't care. There we go. That's good. And just because we can, can we? Little piece of packing tape in the front on the leading edge. Uh, the lower portion of the fuselage is the part that'll probably contact grass and ground. All righty. Um, I would consider that airplane done. That's 50 minutes. Um, ooh, that's a frightening shot. There you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. And uh, of course I only have one. Oh, no, I do have a second. Here. These are not fully built out yet. The Nerf dart drops. Let's see, are these a pair? Yeah, this is, uh, these are beat up. They're kind of old. <clears throat> these are, oh yeah, this is, uh, these are not a match set. This is from the other set. What the hell are you even looking at? All right, well, you get the point. Yeah, this goes on the other way, but. Yeah, these are not matched. They're not even, yeah, these are completely wrong. They don't have the tooths. That's a very old design of the Nerf dart attach mechanism. So we're gonna put those there. Um, we built a plane. I don't know, that's about it. Anything else you wanna see? Um, shoot me an email, drop me a comment. It has no name in the comment section. Tell me what name you think this thing should have. Um, I gotta figure it out because Plank is a lifeless name. Anyway, I'm Brett, this is Useful Aircraft. Thanks for your time.